Okay. So for positive, remember, it has to be above the x-axis. And then for negative, it's all the values below the x-axis. So we were able to look at the first example. Number one, we had um, above the x-axis. And then we look at the start of the green to the end of the green. And we're looking at the x values. So I go from negative 3 to positive 1. And then for the negative, we're going below the x-axis. And I had two portions below the x-axis. I went from negative infinity to negative 3, union 1 to positive infinity. And remember, you always have to go from left to right, okay? So let's try number 2 together since we only got to number 1. And you should have had some stuff already highlighted. So, like, for example, my increasing was in pink yesterday. And then I had the decreasing in blue. And then we had our fake coordinate points up here. That was negative infinity, positive infinity. And then this one we had uh, positive and positive infinity. That's what you should have so far on your graph, correct? Yes? Okay. So now I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to use purple for positive. So pick a color. Hopefully different from the two that you had originally. So I'm going to use positive. Remember that's above the x-axis. So I'm cutting it at the x-axis and I'm only highlighting what's on top of it. Okay? So I have this portion right here is positive and this portion is positive because those are above the x-axis, okay? And then I'm looking at the purple from the start of the purple to the end of the purple. What x values do we have? So I have negative infinity to negative 2. So I'm going to put negative infinity to negative 2. Uh, oh my god, those. Uh, union, sorry. <laughs> I really have to take this. Sorry, guys. Hold on. The other portion goes from left to right. So the left part is a 6 goes to positive infinity. So this goes from 6 to positive infinity infinity okay because we always have to go from the left to the right okay all right then i'm gonna switch color and i'm gonna use green for negative and i like to highlight the word right here just so that i know what color i used for each piece so negative, remember, is below the x-axis. So if I cover the top of the graph here, if I cover the top portion, I'm left with just the bottom hump right there, okay? So I'm going to highlight in green under the graph. And notice I can still see the pink and the blue. I did not highlight over the pink and the blue. I highlighted like underneath or on top of it so that I can still see all four colors on my graph, okay? So for negative, I'm looking at the start of the green. What x value do I have here? At the start of the green, I have a negative 2, and I keep going until the end of the green. What value is a 6? So that's going to go from negative 2 to 6. Um, so that's what we ended on yesterday. Um, I'm going to skip the practice problem and we're going to, that's where we were supposed to start on yesterday so that today we can do the second day. Um, we're going to talk about now end behavior. End behavior is not on your paper anywhere, so you kind of just listen for a second. For end behavior, 
that's a description of what happens to the values of f of x as x approaches infinity and x approaches negative infinity, okay? So the end behavior of a graph describes the far left and the far right portions of the graph, meaning like this far left and this far right over here. That's what end behavior is talking about. It's talking about the ends of the graph, okay? Um, so we're going to build the, or talk about the end behavior. Yesterday, I had you guys copy somewhere on your notes, I think, the X and Y chart. Did I, did I have you guys copy the X and Y chart? Yeah. Like this? Yeah. yeah? Okay, so find this wherever you drew it. Find this on your paper. You have your X and Y chart where the X axis, this was the right side going to positive infinity. And then we have the left side going to negative infinity. We had our Y values going up to positive infinity. And then our Y values going down to negative infinity. You should have this somewhere in your paper if you drew it, yes? We're going to add on to this, so make sure you find this on your notes. If, let's say, I had something pointing in this direction, just draw an arrow just in here like this. Is that the right side or the left side? right side and is it pointing upwards or pointing downwards upwards right that's a right up so then i'm going to write my end behavior this is going to be as x approaches the right side well the right side is positive infinity then what are your y's doing the y's are approaching upwards and so upwards is a positive infinity Okay, and let's say I end up with something pointing in this direction. So in this direction up here, is that the left side or the right side? Left side, and is it going up or is it going down? Upwards, that's a left up. So for my end behavior, I'm gonna write as X approaches the left side, well, left is negative infinity this time. What are your y's doing? The y's are approaching upwards, and up is a positive infinity. Okay? All right, and let's say I got something pointing in this direction down here, my blue. Is that the left side or the right side? Left side. And is it pointing upwards or pointing downwards? Down. That's a left down. So I'm going to say as X approaches the left, left is negative. What are the Y's doing? The Y's are going downwards. So down is a negative infinity. And then for my last corner over here, I'm going to use green. For this last corner over here, is that the left side or the right side? Right side. Is it going up or going down? Down. That's a right down, so I'm going to say as X approaches the right side, that's a positive infinity. The function is going downwards, so that means the Y are approaching negative infinity. Okay. Um, so I use this a lot, like left and right, up or down. You will hear me say that a lot in this unit. Um, 
for end behavior, that's very helpful. So let's go ahead and look at back to problem number one. We're still on the front page of your notes, problem number one. Okay, so for problem number one, I'm looking at the end behaviors. So I'm going to focus on this corner over here. Is that the left side or the right side? Left side, and is it going up or going down? That's going down, right? Left down. Um, so I'm going to write my end behavior. Well, it kind of correlates with the... Um, Fake coordinate point that we had yesterday. Uh, the fake coordinate point, can you double check it? What did you guys have for the fake coordinate point with the infinity? Both negative, right? So negative infinity, negative infinity. That's what we had yesterday. So if you notice, that correlates with the left down, right? The left goes to negative. So that means the x's go to negative. And then down goes to negative, so your y's go to negative infinity. Okay, so when I write my end behavior, I'm going to use those two pieces. Um, Notice I have just a small blank right here. My end behavior is not going to fit here, so I'm going to have to stack them. I believe you guys have like a space, a bigger space, so start your first one towards the top, and then you can do the second one underneath. Okay, so for end behavior, I'm going to start it as x approaches so my x's go to negative infinity then the y's the y goes to negative infinity that's the first part of my end behavior now if i look at this side we had write down and our fake coordinate point was positive and negative right Positive infinity, negative infinity. Was that our fake coordinate point? Mm -hmm. Yes? Okay. So I'm going to say as x approaches positive infinity, my y values are going to negative infinity. And you have to write it like that, like that. The first x has to go from the negative and the y goes to negative. x goes to positive, y goes to negative. You can write them in reverse order, like you can flip these two, it's fine. Um, it doesn't matter which side you talk about first. So long as like the pairs are correct. Okay, so let's try number two now. For number two, if I look at this top corner, my fake coordinate point that we had yesterday, that was the left side going up. So the left, the left side goes to negative infinity. And going upwards goes to positive infinity. So that was our fake coordinate point. So when I write my end behavior, the x's go to negative infinity. So as x approaches negative infinity, the y's are going to positive infinity. And then for the other end over here, that was a right going upwards. So the right side the right goes to positive infinity, and going upwards is a positive infinity. So my x's are going to positive. I'm going to say as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches upwards, which is a positive infinity. Okay, so again, the negative infinity for x has to go with the positive infinity. The positive x infinity needs to go to the positive infinity for the y. 
Again, you can write them in reverse order as long as the pairs are correct. Okay. Um, next brings us to the concept here. You guys need to copy this on your notes. You have the, at the bottom of page one, you have these two text boxes you guys need to copy. Okay. Uh, so I zoomed in for you guys. If you need it, if we uh, read this, it says the relative maximum is the highest point in a particular section of a graph. So what it means by a particular section of a graph is you're looking at like humps. You're looking for hilltops. So at the very top of the hilltop, that would be your relative maximum. Okay. And then if you have the relative minimum, it's the lowest point in a particular section of a graph. So you're looking for U-shapes that it dips at the bottom. So whatever's at the bottom is a minimum, okay? So if I look at this graph over here, I'm looking for relative maximums and minimums. If you notice, I'm looking for humps. So I have a hump right here. That means negative 5, 1 would be a maximum. I also have another hump over here. That means that 0, 3 is a maximum. And another hump over here. That means that 4, 1 would be a maximum. So I have relative maximums and I also have an absolute maximum. An absolute maximum, that's like the very highest of all the points. So if you notice, even though these were maximums, this one is higher than each of those. So that would be an absolute maximum. It doesn't really ever ask you for max, uh, absolute maximum, but that's just what it means. And then for minimums, if you notice, you're looking for U-shapes at the bottom. So the minimum is negative 3, negative 2. And then this also has a U-shape here. It dips at this point, which is 2, 0. And if you notice, the arrows are not minimums because it doesn't dip, okay? If it doesn't dip, there's no minimum there, okay? So if we look back to problem number one at the top, example number one, I'm checking to see if I have a max or a min. So if you look at, I have a hilltop. So my hilltop, is that a max or a minimum? That's a maximum because it's at the top, and what's the coordinate point? Well, the coordinate point is this over here, negative 1, comma 4. All right, then for problem number 2, we have a minimum. So the minimum is down here because it's a U-shape. It dips at the bottom. That means it's a minimum. And then the minimum is whatever this is. So that's a 2, negative 16. All right. And I believe that's the very last thing to ask you for. So we have covered all the key features between yesterday and today. So now let's do one full problem. This is now on the second page of your notes. Okay, so on the second page of your notes, you should find this example. It says determine the key features for the function and we have to talk about all of them, okay? So yesterday we talked about zeros, we talked about increasing and decreasing, and then yesterday and today we talked about positive and negative. And then the rest of today we talked about um, end behavior and we talked about max and min. So I want you guys to review from yesterday. How do I find the zeros? Where are the zeros located? Go ahead and write these to your partner. Where do you find the zeros?
Okay, ready? All right, so Daniela, can you tell me what are the zeros here? You're not sure? Okay. Um, Jose Gonzalez, can you help him out? Her, sorry, I said him. Her, can you help her out? Negative three and four, good. It's the two points, oh, JJ. It's the two points that are touching the x-axis. So if you remember, it's the ones that touch the x-axis. So my x-axis is here. So my two points are negative three and four. Okay. So the zeros are crossing or touching the x-axis. And if you remember, it's only the x values. Okay. All right, then for decreasing and increasing, you guys can pick a color. You can use the same color as you did yesterday. I am going to use pink for increasing and blue for decreasing. So decreasing and blue. So pick a color. Okay, so I'm using decreasing. So if you remember, the decreasing means you're going down from left to right. So if I look at the graph, at what point do I go downwards? Well, here from left to right, I'm actually going upwards, right? Until I hit this maximum at the top, and then it starts to decrease. So I'm going to highlight in blue this portion of the graph down here. That's where I'm decreasing. And then we need to talk about the fake coordinate points as well. So is that blue section right there, is that the left side or the right side? Right side. And is it pointing upwards or pointing downwards? Down. I judge you. So if I make my fake coordinate point, the right side, the right side is which infinity, positive or negative? Positive. And it's going downwards. So which infinity, positive or negative? Negative. It's going down, so it's negative infinity. Okay? So for my interval, if you remember, the interval has to be two x's. That has to be a x1 comma x2. Two x's, you're looking at the start of the blue to the end of the blue going from left to right. So at the start of the blue, what x value do I have right here? 2.25. To the end of the blue is what x value? Positive infinity. So x1 is the first one. Okay, so X is the first, Y is the second. So I'm only looking at the X's. I'm going from 2.25 to positive infinity. That's my interval. 2.25 to positive infinity. All right, so now I'm going to switch color. I'm going to use pink for increasing. So my pink one, that means you have to go upwards to increase, right? So starting at the far left over here, I'm going upwards until I reach the maximum. And I have an arrow on the end over here. So for my pink side, is that the left side or the right side? The pink one is the left side and is it going upwards or pointing downwards pointing downwards right so our fake coordinate point the left is which infinity look up here left is negative infinity and it's pointing downwards so down is your negative infinity So for my interval, I'm looking at the start of the pink to the end of the pink. So at the start of the pink, what's my x value? 
Negative infinity to the end of the pink is what x value? 2.25. So I'm going to write negative infinity to 2.25. Okay, and then that brings us now to positive and negative. So switch color. I'm using purple for positive. So for my positive, I am, uh, remember, that's above the x-axis. And negative would be below the x-axis. So at what point, if I were to... Um, like block off the x-axis at the bottom. I'm going to start here at the 0 of negative 3, and it goes until I get to the 0 of 4. And I don't highlight the bottom portions. I'm only doing the top part of the graph that's above the x-axis. Um, and I still want to be able to see the pink and the blue, so I'm just going to highlight like on top of the pink and the blue. My purple is going to go from here to here. Okay. And remember, you're looking at the start of the purple to the very end of the purple. So my start of my purple is what x value right here? Negative 3 to the end of the purple goes to what x value? 4. So I'm going to write negative 3, 4. All right, then for negative, switch color. I'm going to use green for negative. The negative, that's below the x-axis, so cover the top of the graph. If I cover the top of the graph, I'm going to highlight this portion and this portion because those are below the x-axis, okay? Um, so below the x-axis, I have this section. And I have this section over here. So now I'm looking at the greens. Notice I have two different sections. So I'm going to have to end up using the union. Okay. So for my beginning of the green to the end of the green, what X values do we have here? The beginning of the green is negative. To the end of the green is negative 3. So I have negative infinity to negative 3. Then I have to use a union because I have another section that's also below the x-axis. So my other section is over here. The beginning of the green to the end of the green. What's my interval there? 4, 2, well, remember, you're looking at the x. The x is positive. So it would be 4 to positive infinity. All right, and then for my end behavior, I'm looking at the end. So I'm looking at this side over here. I have the left side going down, and I already talked about the infinities here. So the left side, the x's go to negative. So I'm going to say as x approaches, the left is a negative infinity. The function is going down, so that means the y values go to negative infinity. And then for the other um, end, I'm looking at this side now. That's the right side. So the x's go to positive infinity. So I'm going to say as x approaches positive infinity, the y's are going down. So the y goes to negative infinity.
Okay, and then that brings us now to relative maximums and minimums. So if you remember maximums, you're looking for humps at the top, like this. And then minimums, you're looking for U-shapes, where it dips at the bottom. So maximums. I'm looking for humps. So I have a hump at the top over here. So is that a max or a min? Max. So I'm going to say maximum. I don't know why I circled that, but maximum at 2.25 comma 6,077. And then do I have any minimums like this that dip? I don't have any that dip at the bottom like this. So I actually have no minimum. This would be an A or none. I don't have minimum. Even though this it point oh chetos. I thought I had the pointer, my bad. Even though this is pointing downwards, there's no like minimum because it doesn't dip anywhere. Okay. All right. Um next example we're gonna do I kind of basically did this one. So for the next one, I'm gonna ask you guys more questions um than the previous one. Okay. So for the next example here, we have the zeros again. So zeros, remember, is where we cross the x-axis. So lefty side partner, what are the zeros here? All right, ready? So Joseph, can you tell us the zeros? Thank you. Negative five, two, and seven. Awesome. All right, for decreasing, I'll do the highlighting for you guys. Um, but you guys tell me what the intervals are gonna be. Okay. So for decreasing, remember that we're looking for the graph going downwards. It has to go down from left to right. So highlight the portion that's going downwards. So you would stop at the uh, you would start at the top and go towards the bottom until you reach a minimum. So go from the top until you reach a minimum. And then it starts to increase from the min to the max. But then when you get another maximum, it starts to decrease. So back at the top towards the bottom. And then it starts to increase until it gets to the maximum again. So from the max until you get to the bottom. You should have three sections this time that are decreasing. And then we have to talk about our fake coordinate points. So for the for this side over here, is this the left or the right side of the graph? Left. And is it going upwards or pointing downwards? up and then for this other corner over here is this the left side or the right side right side and is it going upwards or pointing downwards down so i want you guys with your partner tell me what the two like fake coordinate points are going to be there righties tell your partner what are your two fake coordinate points All right, you ready? I'm going to call people out for the fake corner point at the top. You can use this if you need to. So the left side going up. Those are your infinities. Ready? Jose Medina, can you give me the left up? Which infinity would that be? Negative infinity, comma. No, uh, just the fake corner point at the top. Left is negative, so up is 
positive. Thank you. All right, for the other one, though, write down what fake corner points do you have, Alondra? Okay, good. Positive and negative. Awesome. All right, for then, I want you guys to practice the decreasing intervals. You should have a total of three because you have three blue highlighted sections, okay? So I have a parenthesis, union, parenthesis, union, parenthesis, because you have three of them. So righties, tell your partner, what are your three intervals there? Remember, we're doing the start of the blue to the end of the blue. Start of the blue to end of blue. Start of blue to end of blue. Start of blue to end of blue. This one's left up, right? Uh, say that again? No, these you, um, like that's the start is here and the end is here. You only do like left up, right down at the very ends of the corners. Um, let me know if you guys have questions. All right, so for this, do you, you guys want to, how confident do you feel? Super confident? Okay, can you tell me the first one? <laughs> Name to negative five. Good. All right. That's the beginning of the blue to the end of the blue, right? All right. Then what's the second one? Can I call somebody? Let me see. Ashley, for the middle one, what's the interval here? You're looking at the X's. From the start to the end. What are your X values? You don't know? Okay. Um, Bilal, what about this? Can you tell me? What's the start of the blue right here? What's X of value? To 2. Okay, good. Negative 1.8 comma 2. And then for the last one, it's the start of the blue to the end of the blue. So the start of the blue is 5.6 until you get to... Positive infinity. So 5.6 comma positive infinity. Okay. All right. Then for the increasing, you're going to switch color. I'm using blue for increasing. All right. So let's go highlight the portions that's going upwards. So upwards from negative 5 to negative 1.8, and then from the 2 to the 5.6. And I basically just told you the two intervals. It's the start of the pink to the end of the pink. So at the start, what's my x value right here? Negative 5 to the end is negative 1.8. So I'm going to go negative 5. negative 5 to negative 1.8 union my second one was the start of the pink to the end of the pink can i have lefty side partner what is this interval here okay ready carlos can you tell me what is the second interval 2 to 5.6. Good. All right. Next, we got the positive. So let me switch color. I was using purple for positive. Positive. Tell your partner. Um, I think that was lefties just shared. So righties. Tell your partner. How do I know where is the positive? Is it above the x-axis or below the x-axis? Righties. Okay, so is this above or below? Tell me. So you're saying above or below. Ready? Tell me. In three, two, one. Above. So you cross out the bottom of the x-axis, which is basically only this portion. 
and then the rest of it is positive. So take your highlighter, or marker, color pen, whatever you got. We're going to highlight in purple everything until you get to the last zero. It's everything that's above the x-axis. Now I'm looking at the very start of the purple. What's my interval at this very start of the purple here? Need infinity until the very end of the purple is what x value? 7. So this is a negative infinity, comma, 7. And then the negative would be below the x-axis, which is here. So the beginning of the green to the end of the green, that's a 7 to positive infinity. That was negative. Um, I didn't get to finish the end behavior. The bell's about to ring pretty soon. So uh, the homework, don't worry about it yet. I prefer you guys do it in class tomorrow so where you have highlighters and stuff for you, okay? All right. Um,